Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are going to pull this dinner together. I'm at my parents' house. If you missed part one to this video, my mom and I prepped all the food for this party. We have Hasselback butternut squash we're making for the first time. We are gonna pull together at Beef Wellington. I made the puff pastry yesterday. We got the beef seared. We have scalloped potatoes here. I'm here way early. It's only 10.30 in the morning and dinner's not till four. But I just figured I'd come over, hang out with my parents, and I would edit a video while I'm here. So if you missed part one, I'll link it down in the description box so you can go watch part one if you're interested in seeing that. See, we have our beef here. My mom. I want the beef to get to room temperature. That's Good why we morning. took it. Took it out of the fridge. And we were supposed to have a party of 18, but uh, people are dropping like flies around here. We're still having the party, but I think there's only going to be a total of like maybe six six or eight of us yeah it's six adults and two kids or maybe eight adults and three kids <laughs> so it's a little bit smaller so we have plenty of food so my mom was gonna make two chickens for everybody because this one little beef wellington wasn't gonna be probably enough for 18 people and she's decided she's still gonna go ahead and make the chickens even though there's not as many of us anymore well I can always debone the chicken use the meat in another recipe or for one of the families that isn't able to come, we could pack up leftovers and send them a whole chicken. Yeah. For the chickens, I make the five tablespoon rub. I have labeled an old spice jar from Penzi's um, to put it in. I make it in a big dish. Uh, I think it, Becky's already got the link to the recipe in scratchpantry.com. But I discovered that instead of trying to spoon it on, that if I use a shaker mm, that's a good idea. and a funnel, I can make a huge batch. And then I can fill up the shaker jar and it's just a whole lot easier. I'm, and I don't risk contaminating my full jar with chicken or beef blood or whatever the kind of meat it is I'm putting it on. So I'll show you how I do that when I get the, when I cut the chickens. The thing I'm the most excited about today is assembling the beef wellington. We have all the components cooked, but we have to actually assemble it and cook it, which is pretty intimidating. Are you trying to be quiet? I'm trying to be quiet, but I have to get the pans out of the cupboard. Go ahead and get them out. <laughs> this time, I'm remembering to take the giblets out of the chicken before I finish preparing it. The last time we recorded uh, poultry, uh, I remembered in the middle of the night that I hadn't taken the, the giblets out when we did the turkey. Butterfly it, but what's the word you use? Spatchcock. Spatchcock. And I take my kitchen scissors and I'm going to cut down the spine. So I made this puff pastry yesterday, but I forgot to do one of the turn and fold. So I'm going to do that today and then we'll get it back in the fridge. And I try not to use an excessive amount of paper towels, but I'll tell you when I'm working with raw meat, I use paper towels. simple this works for seasoning it rather than reaching a spoon in with my chickeny hands and using it that way and possibly doing cross-contamination. And when you do a chicken on the Traeger, because it's a smoker, without it being in a pan, the meat is directly on the rack. Uh, I season both sides because it will be crispy top and bottom that way. It doesn't sit in a pan of juices. It, it drips directly onto the bottom of the Traeger. So I'm done with all my folds. Now I'm gonna wrap it back up, put it in the refrigerator until we're ready to assemble our beef wellington. I'm shocked how easy it is to make puff pastry. This is only my second time doing it and it's pretty straightforward. What we're going to do now is we're going to start to assemble the beef wellington. I seared this beef tenderloin yesterday and we have prosciutto and a mushroom mixture that I made and we have to wrap it together, put it in the fridge for 30 minutes. 
before we put the puff pastry on it. My sister's here and starting to decorate for my nephew. We're celebrating my dad's birthday and my nephew's birthday. And she's got some Star Wars happy birthday stuff up, which is super cute. So it matches, oh, it's really dark. So it matches the cake that we made for him yesterday. So let's get the Beef Wellington assembled. So you might hear kids and people in the background because it's starting to turn into a party around here. I'm gonna take the prosciutto and I'm supposed to lay it, if I can. Oh, you brought balloons too? My sister's uh, yeah, balloons. No, oh, sir. Balloons too? Yeah. I'm just gonna hang them on the um, window. Yeah. Oh, this works really well to do it this way. So take the paper, lay it on your saran wrap. So I have three pieces of saran wrap on here. The mushroom mixture that we made yesterday has a name and it's called duck cell and we are going to be putting that on top of this prosciutto. So we have to get enough prosciutto to wrap our beef. I think I'm going to do a couple more pieces this way. I think I bought three or four packages. You bought plenty. Good. Oh, we need the mustard, mom. We have a nice layer of prosciutto. I need to take off the strings from the tenderloin. So we have some Dijon mustard and we're gonna slather this along the whole beef wellington, just like this. This is our mushroom mixture we made yesterday. We need to evenly distribute this on our prosciutto. So I'm trying to do a nice even layer. My mom is setting up the drinks behind me, so you might hear her. You're fine, mom. Look how good that looks. This smells incredible. It's mushrooms, shallots, garlic, all the good things. My mom is setting up the drinks and the desserts, and I'll show you what she's doing here in a minute after we get this done. But now we put our beef wellington, or excuse me, our tenderloin on there, and we're gonna use the saran wrap to help, let me wipe my hands, help us wrap it. Do you need an extra set of hands? I don't know. Do you think I put enough? Oops. Oh, we might need more prosciutto. Just make it a little bit longer so we can close it. There we go. I'm gonna take a little bit of this mushroom mixture out so that we can close it. Right. Okay, and then it said roll it really tightly. So I'm going to Now it says, refrigerate this for 20 to 30 minutes before we roll it in the puff pastry. There is a lot of pressure when you're making something like this because this is a very expensive, high quality cut of meat. But I buy my beef from a local rancher and I buy half a cow at a time. And I paid $4.75 per pound for this tenderloin roast. Because when you buy from a local rancher, you're paying the same price, whether you buy these very expensive cuts of meat, I'm gonna walk and put this in the refrigerator, or if you're buying ground beef. So I do feel like there is some pressure when making a project like this. I'm going into the garage so we can refrigerate this. Not quite as much pressure though as when I buy it from a local rancher or farmer than if I was to buy this from a grocery store. That beef is 100% grass fed, grass finished. And so I would have spent probably $45 a pound to buy that at a grocery store where I just paid about a little over $4 and some cents. So it's a great way if you buy half a cow to practice or try some of these recipes you might not normally try because you're not, you don't have as much money at stake. There was no pun intended there. <laughs> okay, we've got the cakes out. Let me show you the cakes that we made yesterday. That looks really cute, mom. Thank you. This is a carrot cake that she made for my dad. And then my nephew is turning six. So we made him a Star Wars themed cake. And what we need to do now is kind of clean up our mess. We're getting the drinks out. We've got the chickens ready. My mom spatchcocked the chickens. We're gonna put those in the Traeger. And we have to make up the brown butter sauce for our Hasselback butternut squash. And prep the, uh, and prep the 
Asparagus? Asparagus. Okay. So let me reread this recipe. We're gonna make the brown butter sauce for the butternut squash. I'm gonna take a half a cup of butter and put it in a little pan and we're gonna brown this and then we're gonna fry up some sage to put on top and it's gonna be phenomenal. If you've never had fried sage and brown butter, I would highly recommend you try it because it is delicious. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic too. This is fresh from the garden. Oh, those butternut squashes are from my garden too. I try to incorporate pantry challenge into this meal for my dad. So the beef is from my freezer, all the garlic we cooked with and those butternut squashes. I wanted to make, here we have scallop potatoes. I wanted to make scallop potatoes with homegrown potatoes from my garden, but I used all those potatoes when we made the gnocchi. So I didn't have any left, but that's okay. These scallop potatoes are gonna be really, really good too. While that's melting, I'm gonna take a minute just to clean up my mess here. We did not use all the mushrooms that we made up. So this mushrooms would be really good in eggs or something. My mom was saying she would not waste those. Oh my gosh, I can already smell this butter. Can you smell the butter, mom? So once you get to this point, you don't want to walk away because it can burn really, really quickly. Let's see if we can turn a light on. There we go. I'm reading the directions on the Beef Wellington again just to keep myself clear on how to do this. I've never made a Beef Wellington before. Once you can start to smell it, you're going to start to see the the little particles in the butter, the proteins in the butter turn brown. Then we're gonna drop in our sage leaves. The only time I've ever made this before is, it's a really good pasta sauce, brown butter and sage, fried sage on gnocchi. Really good. I'll let that fry. Ooh, looking good. The Traeger's ready for the chicken. We're gonna call this done. We're gonna take that off the heat and then when we roast up our butternut squash again, we're gonna pour that over when it's done. I'm rereading how to assemble the beef wellington. The only thing we have to do left is roll out the puff pastry, put the beef in it, roll it up, put it with an egg wash and bake it. <laughs> and the baking part is the part that I'm a little nervous about. So um, what do you need help with mom? Uh, I'm just wiping things down one more time. Uh, too early to make the punch. Um, I got a new meat thermometer from my yeah. son and daughter-in-law and my other son-in-law got it all Bluetooth to my phone and the app and everything so it's working so I'm really excited. I've been kind of limping along with three or four different ones that I use and then kind of take the average temperature. Well that's okay with you know chicken because you can actually just bend the leg and see how uh, well done it is. But I don't want to do that with this um, expensive cut of meat. Yeah, <laughs> so we want to make sure it's actually at the temperature we want it to be. So I'm really excited to try that new thermometer. Yeah, and it looks like um, we want to try to get it at about 120 to 125 degrees. We'll take it out of the oven, internal temperature, and it'll continue to cook just a little bit. And How long do they say it is per pound? It says about 40 to 50 minutes because they're all the same thickness oh, okay. generally. I think okay. that's why it doesn't say per pound. All right, that then, makes sense. Yeah. Do you have um, sesame seeds? I believe I do. Because um, it says coarse salt on the top, but I think it would be pretty to sprinkle with sesame seeds on the top. Uh, look and see, I'm pretty sure I do. Because we're gonna put an egg wash. So we're basically there. We just no sesame seeds, but poppy seeds can work too. Look how beautifully brown that is. That's not burnt. That's just pure caramel, delicious delicious flavor right there. Oh, I forgot to add the garlic. Hmm. Yeah, we could use poppy I seeds. I have poppy seeds from our favorite store to buy bulk, Winco. I use these to put in a lemon uh, pound cake or a, a lemon bundt cake. It's one of my husband's second favorite cakes after carrot cake. What my mom is doing right now is she's trying to figure out what time everything needs to go in the oven. We pre-cooked a ton of stuff and it just needs to go in the oven so it can be finished cooking. And we wanna eat dinner at four o'clock and it's 1.21 right now, so she's working backwards. So the potatoes are gonna take about an hour. The beef is gonna take about an hour. The asparagus and squash are gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes. So she's going to work backwards and she'll know what time things need to go into the oven. I just reread 
the Hasselback recipe and we need to put this brown butter on our butternut squash so that it's ready to go into the oven. Oh, and I'm doing air fried french fries for the uh, dairy free oh, that's nephews right. so they can have their special treat as well. And i uh, brand new to air frying so I don't know how long that's gonna take. I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't know either, I don't have an air fryer. So this we got is, one for Christmas. So I have not seasoned this. I pre-cooked it yesterday just so it was tender enough to put a bunch of slashes in it, but I haven't salt or peppered it. So I'm gonna do that. Something smells, oh, it's that butter. I was gonna say, something smells really good. Oh, you know what I have? What? I have that mandel and I can actually make regular french fries. Won't that be fun? Oh yeah. My mom bought herself a mandolin yesterday and we used it to make the scallop potatoes. The sage is in here really crispy. We'll sprinkle this on this squash after it comes out of the oven because I don't want it to overcook. Brown butter is probably one of my favorite smells. It smells like, what? what is that? Um, butterscotch. Caramel, so good. I'm gonna prep the asparagus. We're gonna roast the asparagus because that's our favorite way to eat asparagus around here. So the way that I know where to cut all of them is you just pick like a medium sized one from your batch, you break it, where it breaks is where the tenderness is at. And you line them up and you use that as a guide and you just cut them all at that length. So I'm gonna get these cut up and then we're gonna wash them. My mom's washing potatoes for... I got three russets here I'm going to make into air french fries for the boys. No, I don't think that's right. I can't imagine that this would be above. There's, There's no way. There, yeah, I'm just making little peels, so that's not okay, right. Okay, you need it. This is what I was saying, I think. You need this on the thickest setting. Oh, I thought I did that already. There we go. Yes, that looks better. Okay, try again. Now that I've cut this to smithereens. All right, let's see how this works. This is a new toy my mom just got yesterday <laughs> for herself. So. I have a uh, affinity for kitchen gadgets. You should look at my cupboards and <laughs> she's drawers. Got, she's got a lot I of cupboards. A lot of them. So oh, she, there we go. So she just got an air fryer. And she's gonna make these. My um, nephews have some food allergies, and she's gonna How's make. How's that? That's perfect. Those are gonna get really crispy in the air fryer, probably. Don't run my wrist along it, right? It almost might be easier if you do that, like on a piece of parchment paper, mom, or something. Oh, okay. So then it's on the. Oh yeah, those look good. Yeah, look at those. Professional. Back. Yeah. Appreciate all you're doing for this birthday. Thanks. We're gonna need another cookie sheet. My uh, pleasure. It's my pleasure. When you're roasting your vegetables, you do not want to overcrowd them. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think that's my second uh, canister, and they come a grinder with an extra canister. So my other corn or my other um. That comes out fast. Roasted garlic from Penzi's is fantastic. A few of you have wrote me on Instagram telling me you bought it after we went there last time. So good. Everything is ready to go right into the oven. We have our vegetables, our potatoes. My mom is finishing the potatoes for my nephew. She's. I definitely don't have the knack for operating this thing. Whatever you were cutting. Oh, you were you were cutting I was potatoes. Doing, yeah, but I was doing slices. So. Yeah. It's probably easier than... Some of them will be potato sticks, you know, those little sticks in a can. Yeah. Some of them will be potato chips. <laughs> Shoestrings. <laughs> yes, and some of them are the well, right diameter. So we'll see. They'll be I'll good with... i you what they don't care. They just want ketchup on it. I was going to say, they'll be good with ketchup on it. <laughs> All right, so I have... It's about 1.30 right now. I'm not going to roll out the puff pastry till 2.30 because I want it to go in the oven at 3.00. And I have about an hour where we don't really have to do much. I think I'm gonna pour myself something to drink. I'm gonna go sit, visit with, I'm gonna go sit and visit with my sister and my brother-in-law. And 
pantry challenge. I'm completely out of my seltzer, so while I'm at my mom's house, I'm gonna take full advantage of the seltzer water, because I have no cans of seltzer, and I have a problem, I have an addiction to it. There could be worse addictions, I guess, but cheers, and we'll be back when we roll out the pub. fancy flavored ones there, too. I like plain. Moment of truth, we are going to roll up our beef wellington. We have our puff pastry, our beef mixture, and let's just do this thing. All right, here we go, friends. Are you nervous about this, Mom? No. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Well, the only thing I'm nervous about is the fact that I have never seen one. Oh, you haven't seen one on TV? Well, yes, but I've never seen one in person. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't know quite what to expect. You know, the stuff you see on Chopped is different than what it really looks like. In person? In person. So I don't know anybody that cooks something that fancy in such a tiny little amount of it. <laughs> <laughs> we said yesterday, well, I said this, my mom didn't, but I feel like I'm eyeing a gardener. I feel like this is a recipe for a party, like a dinner party she would make. She is one of my absolute favorite cooking personalities. I love her cooking style. Oh, I can see big chunks of butter in there. That's good, that's what we yeah. want. Yeah, that is good. Okay. That doesn't look big enough. No. I have a camera person. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. We'll do our best here. So I think what I wanna try to do is roll it a little thin so we'll have some extra to decorate the top. Yeah, I've seen pictures where they, you know, um, use egg wash to stick little leaves or yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that on there. Do you like have you do with a pie pastry. Do you have cookie cutters? I do. You want the letters to write out happy birthday? <laughs> you might be able to do that. I was, I was teasing. Oh. But I do have a bucket of teeny little letters. Uh, we could put Dad's and, and Hudson's initials on it. Oh, yeah, let's do that. My mom's getting... The cookie cutter's out. The cakes are underneath her, so she said, say a little prayer that she doesn't drop anything on the cakes. I don't know how thin to roll this. Does it say in the directions? Nope. I think in those right. directions you're using store-bought puff pastry. I have a snowman. I have a series of hearts. I have some letters. I have an apple. I have a gingerbread, a star. You want small things, right? Yeah. I have a small star, snowflakes, Christmas trees. Ooh, no! The smallest things I have are the letters or a star and a snowflake, a gingerbread man. Does this seem like a good thickness, Mom? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay we can do their initials. Let's see if I have their initials. Do you have a J? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I know. We could we could do a heart. Okay. M heart H. That's Grandpa. I don't know if we're gonna have. Hudson. I don't know if we're gonna have that much. Excess. Oh yeah, cut off the end. Yeah, we'll cut that off. And then I could roll it thinner, that's what we could do. So it said to do an egg wash so that we can seal this side. That's about perfect. No, I'm gonna take some of this moisture off, look. Oh, Oh yeah, we'll have plenty of pastry to, do you want to cut out the shapes? Uh, actually, I think I'm going to get this, the potatoes ready to go in. Okay. I didn't follow my own advice. I didn't set timers for <laughs> my, my, uh, I made my countdown list, but I didn't set my timers because grandkids needed some attention. So I'm 10 minutes late putting this in the oven, but we're flexible. It will be just fine. So I'm not seeing the layers in this puff pastry as well as I did when I made this at Christmas. So we'll just see how well this turns out. <laughs> We're doing our best here. It's easier to work with than the stuff I made at Christmas, but 
it doesn't, I don't see the layers like I. Okay, it's in with foil. Okay, I'm gonna egg wash this whole thing. I'm nervous about this seam, but I think it'll be okay. This is how I get my adrenaline going. Some people jump out of airplanes. I try new recipes. <laughs> <laughs> For dinner parties, no less. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they say to always try a brand new recipe when you're having company over? I don't always do that either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is fun. But I don't do everything in the menu brand new because my family, they're not stuck in a rut, but there are things <laughs> they really like the best. They like and they like it every time. So that might be stuck in a rut. I like the asparagus. I asked uh, Pop Pop what he wanted for his vegetable. And without even a second thought, he said, roast me some asparagus. So this, re this menu was my idea because I had this in my freezer and I wanted to use it up. Um, but we did ask him what he wanted for the side. <laughs> <laughs> so we did not have a choice on the main course, but that's, okay, that's cute. Oops, I just broke the H. Uh oh. I mean, I have had these cookie cutters with the letters since the kids were... Since I can remember. Yeah, teeny tiny. But I don't have all the letters anymore. There's an H. So we have my dad's name loves my nephew's initial. So that is what we're going with. Do you want to egg wash the top, Mom? Sure. And then it's ready to go in the oven because the oven's preheated to 425. Yep. It smells good. It does. I think that's the potatoes, actually, what you're smelling right now. Okay, there we go. Shall we put it in? Yep. Top oven. There we go. We forgot to put the thermometer in, and let's think about where we should put it. Okay, well, it has to be into the, uh, past this line. This is the line. It has to be that deep. They're fine. Um, and I want it in about the middle of the roast. And then we also forgot to cut slits on the top because it's supposed to have slits. Oh, okay. Well, that's got to be past there. All right. That's okay. in. So that's a Bluetooth thing? Yes, that's a thermometer. It said to do this for steam releasing yeah, abilities. Yeah, like you do a pie. And that's all you need is two? No. It's every few inches. So oh, okay. maybe between. Yeah. We're coming. We're going to go... We're gonna go um, drive cars. Okay, so let's put this back in the oven. Sorry, we just we're just done. Oh, yeah. Watch out! Watch out! Uh, why why did you why did you put why did you put heart in that? Because your initials on it. Your initials. Nobody likes coconut popsicles. Okay. <laughs> the kids were eating popsicles outside, and apparently no one likes the coconut ones. We are gonna go ahead and put the chickens on the Traeger. Oh, it smells so good. Whoa. No pellets? I, yeah, I have pop up went this morning and bought me another bag. It wasn't up to temperature because I was out. So plan B, the Traeger was not up to temperature, so we're well, gonna- it was, but I let the pellets run out. So we're gonna put those in the oven and then we're gonna reload the Traeger and as soon as that comes back up to temperature, then we'll put those in the oven. A few of you guys wanted to see my parents' house last time we did a video. My parents are into koi fish and so my dad's got a big koi pond. Oh, do you need to fill the Traeger? I'm not sure. I have to make sure it's still burning. Plan C, Traeger is not gonna come back up to temperature. So we're gonna throw these chickens right in the roaster. In my trusty roaster oven. No problem at all. They just won't be probably quite as juicy, but they'll still taste great. They'll be plenty juicy, but they won't be smoky. And they won't be crunchy. It's okay, I like it without the oh, smokiness. There you <laughs> well, it's a win-win. So Sarah wins on that one. <laughs> Perfect timing. We got to get this thing out. The Bluetooth we had to figure out, but it looks absolutely stunning. It's at 126. It's very loud in here. It's a, it's a party. A bunch of people ended up coming that weren't going to be able to come. Isn't that beautiful?
first sex, I'm, I'm 20. I'm going and tear out and get done before the. I'm afraid, though, the paper's going to. No, I've been working at work on the show in This is when all the commotion happens. Everything's starting to come out of the oven. My mom's going to take the scallop potatoes out. They're boiling like. Crazy. Be careful, it's hot. And it's heavy. And it's molten. Mark, don't walk this way. So we're going to let this cool for at least 10 minutes. While we let that cool, we're going to carve up the meat. If we were to start dishing that, one, everyone would burn themselves, and two, it would get all soupy. So my dad's gonna carve the meat. Normally my sister does this, but yeah. she's not here. <laughs> she's one of the ones that fell ill. <laughs> Here's our gorgeous Hesselback squash. Looks heavenly. I'm going to very carefully transfer it to this platter. Pretty, uh, let's see, I think oh, I need two. I need a longer spatula. Oh, you need two. Oh, it smells so good. Yummy. Yum, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Now we're going to cut into this guy. We're going to cut right through the heart. We're going to put it back together on the other plate. Look at that, dear. Gorgeous. Hey, they're yummy. Oh, my goodness. The best. You got to say, and chicken. I'm going to keep the eggs right, right there. A little thicker piece for capturing the H. Oh. Look at that. Wow. That's gorgeous. Wow. Woohoo. All right, dinner served. I could not be happier how well this dinner came together. It just... It's something I absolutely love to do, and I'm just thrilled with how it turned out. After dinner, my dad and Josh went ahead and did all the dishes. The guys are really, really great around here about doing the dishes. I wanted to show you this was all that was left. A little bit of chicken, only two pieces of beef wellington, and all the veggies were eaten up. It was just a phenomenal meal. And would you want me to make that meal again? Oh, for sure. That, that meal is... Anytime you want. Uh, <laughs> the the, the uh, pastry with the, with the outside layer, the ham, the meat. Beef Wellington. Off the charts. <laughs> Thank you for calling me and asking me what I wanted and suggesting Beef Wellington. The desserts were a hit as well, and this was all that was left. Well, the party is winding down. And that meal was probably one of the best meals I've eaten in a long time. It was a labor of love. The way I tend to show my love to my friends and family is through cooking and through the kitchen. And so this was just a perfect opportunity, especially because we had so many parties that were canceled slash postponed to be able to just celebrate in such a festive and fun way. Thank you for coming along with us as we made this fantastic meal. If you want to see part one to this video, I will link it up here where my mom and I prepped everything. And if you already saw that and you want to see more videos with me and my mom, my mom and I have quite a few videos where we cook for big parties and I can leave those videos down here for you. Thank you so much again for hanging out with me. I greatly appreciate it. It's getting a little bit loud out there again. I hope to see you guys next time. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.